गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज ललित सोनी एंड यू आर वॉचिंग इन फोकस बाय दृष्टि आई एस इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ इन फोकस विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द हिस्टोरिक विजिट बाय अवर प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू ब्रुनई इट इज आफ्टर इस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ द डिप्लोमेटिक टाइज इन नाइनटीन एटी फोर दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज विजिटेड दिस कंट्री सो दैट इवेंट इज हिस्टोरिकल इन इट सेल्फ सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दिस इवेंट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट पॉइंट ऑफ फोकस टूडे विल बी वाई इट वॉज इन न्यूज देन वी विल टॉक अबाउट ब्रुनई as a nation then we'll talk about the population and the demographics of this particular country and then we'll come to the india brunei relations okay then we'll be seeing the significance or the strategic importance of these relations and in the end there will be an mcq for you to practice okay so let's start with the news so prime minister narendra modi's trip on september 3rd and 4th comes at the invitation of his majesty sultan haji hasnal bolkaya basically the sultan over here has actually extended an invitation to our prime minister and in response to that he has visited the country it will be the first bilateral visit to brunei by our prime minister and will mark 40 years of the establishment of the diplomatic ties when we talk about the 40 years of diplomatic ties diplomatic ties with brunei was established in 1984 earlier brunei was under the protectorate of british uh, britishers and then they got independence in 1984 and then we have established the diplomatic ties with the country but this is the first time our prime minister will be visiting it okay so let's move further and we'll see the uh, you can say overview of country small nation located in south east asia on the northern coast of borneo then bordered by the south china sea in the north and surrounded by malaysia you can say otherwise then former british protectorate gained independence in 1984 and this is the time we have established our diplomatic ties with them and it is a member of commonwealth as an, as well as asean when we talk about asean that is why it becomes important for us because with asea we has very various strategic uh, interests uh, which are there in the south east asia so that is why this particular country brunei becomes important for us okay now talking about the location over here they have said that in the north we have south china sea and it is surrounded by malaysia uh, otherwise here you will be seeing in this particular map when we talk about this particular area which is given over here that is the area of Mal uh, you know malaysia okay then talking about brunei this particular part which is over here that is basically your brunei okay and here you will be seeing that in the north we have south china sea and in the south or otherwise east west and south it is basically surrounded by malaysia okay so i hope that is clear this is the location of brunei other than that on this particular visit prime minister has also visited singapore here you will be seeing that this is small city state over here that is basically a singapore okay now talking about this particular area you will be seeing that we have malacca over here and this is called as malacca strait okay now malacca strait is important choke point because most of china's trade is basically happening through this particular area okay you know that we have andaman and nicobar islands somewhere over here and that is why uh you know these islands are important for us because they are on a strategic route okay so i hope that is clear now coming to the next part that is basically talking about the population and the demographics of the country okay now here we'll be seeing approximately population is 460000 somewhere around okay then ethnic composition if we talk about so most of the people who are living over here or you can say two third are classified as a malay people okay including various indigenous groups now then 10% population is chinese other groups are also uh, basically living over here these are included in non malay you can say communities okay so there are people from you can say some indigenous people are there then south asians over there temporary workers which are you know there for you can employment they are also included in the non malay population okay when we talk about the uh, language over here so official language is malay okay official language is malay other than that english is also spoken over there so english is also widely spoken over there okay so these are the two languages other than that, as we have seen that there is this 10% population of chinese so there are certain people who are also there which are you know uh, actually learning chinese or the mandarin language okay so that is about the population and demographics moving further we will be seeing the religion as i told you there are various communities which are living over here so mostly people residing over here are sunni muslim okay but other than that there are chinese also these chinese are practicing various religions like buddhism daoism confucianism christianity etc okay indigenous people follow christianity or traditional religions they have their own religions over there okay so there is a mix of religion which is found in the brunei then demographics if you talk about over 20% of the population is under 
15 years old that is over 20 percent which is under over 20 percent which is under 15 years of age then you will be seeing around 50 percent of the population is under 30 years so you can say that this country is having a demographic dividend this country is having a young population okay so demographics there is young okay so life expectancy is also high that is 78 years here you will be seeing that the uh, fertility rate is uh, um, you know when we talk about the global average so fertility rate is as per the global average but the death rate that is very low when we talk about brunei okay now moving further we will be talking about the india and brunei relations okay 1984 is the time when we have established the diplomatic relations with them because before that it was a british protectorate in 1984 Brunei got the independence and since then we are having the ties with them. Indian diaspora in Brunei date back to 1930s. Before that also we had the diaspora over here. Why? Because both India was also under the you can say British uh, rule and when we talk about Brunei that was also a protectorate of uh, you can say Britishers. So that is why they had some kind of trade relations and there are workers etc. They has been transported over there. So there are Indian diaspora which were living over there since 1930s with around 14,500 Indians currently residing over there. That is the population of Indians which is residing which is quite good because when we talk about the whole country, so population is somewhere around 5 lakh, okay, 4 lakh 60,000 something. So that is why this number is also significant. Now Indians are involved in various sectors like oil and gas, constructions, healthcare, IT sector and textile industry. Okay, and when we talk about the bilateral trade in the recent years, so we have seen that there is a declining trade, uh, you know, uh, trend which is there. Uh, in 2021, we had a trade which is somewhere around 522 uh, million US dollars and that has declined to 382 million US dollars and in 2023, the trade was merely 195 million US dollars. So that is why there was this cause of concern for us to see why this trade is declining. And that can be one of the reasons that our Prime Minister has visited so that we can give another boost to the economic ties, okay. Other than that also there are various sectors where we can go for the, uh, you can say cooperation. Now talking about the strategic importance, why is that after 40 years we are now going to Brunei, why is that we are visiting different countries now. So earlier when we talk about the smaller countries or island nations etc, we did not pay much attention because we had this uh, policy that we will be equidistance from all other countries or all their domestic issues etc. Now India is having a policy wherein we will be uh, you know in connection with all of them, we will be having a good ties with everyone ok. So that is uh, why we are having this philosophy of Vishwa Bandhu ok. Now we are following that, our Prime Minister is following this particular uh, policy in uh, foreign policy if we consider that is Vishwa Bandhu that we are having relations with everyone we are having better, we are trying for the better and the friendly relations with all the nations, okay. In that regard, when we talk about Brunei, Brunei is a key partner in our Act East policy. You know that uh, after the, you can say, uh, collapse of USSR, we have started to look for more partners, okay. So after that, we have gone for the, you know, partnership with the USA as well. In 1992, we have come up with a policy that was Look East policy, okay. At that point of time, we have seen that the Southeast Asian countries are basically performing well and that is why since we were going through a crisis, BOP crisis etc, we are, uh, we have started the economic reforms, we were looking for the investments, we were looking for the economic ties, then we have actually looked for the South Asian, uh, Southeast Asian countries. At that point of time, we have come up with the Look East policy, okay. Then after a long time of nearly 2014, we have come up with the another policy that was Act East. Now in Act East policy, we have increased the area of cooperation, we have increased the sphere of influence, we have tried to go for little bit more far Eastern, for the more far Eastern countries as well, okay. So that was the Act East policy and in that regard also ASEAN becomes important for us, okay. And when we talk about Brunei, Brunei is member of ASEAN. So that is why Brunei becomes a key partner in you can say Act East policy and the Indo-Pacific vision. After that it played a crucial role in strengthening India's ties with ASEAN from 2012 to 2015. Okay, so that is why Brunei has become a significant country for us because our relations were good and they were helping us having a stronghold in the South uh, East Asian regions. Okay, 
Now the widget aims to boost cooperation in defense, trade, energy, technology, healthcare, cultural exchanges, etc. So there are various area of cooperation wherein we can go for more and more MOUs and the, uh, you can say cooperation. Then exploration of new sectors for co collaboration that is between the two countries. Now when we are talking about you know when we are trying to be a export hub, we are trying to be part of the global uh, value chain. So we will try to have such countries uh, with having cooperation in the economic sphere as well. Okay. So that is about you can say strategic importance of uh, Brunei for us. We have actually discussed all the aspect which uh, economic, we have discussed the historical aspect, we have talked about the Brunei as a nation, we have seen why it is important for India. Okay, so that would suffice for your exam point of view. Now in the end we will be having a practice question for your prelims that is Brunei gained independence from which country in 1984, Malaysia, Indonesia, United Kingdom and the United States. So you can attempt this question, answer to me in the comment box with that I would like to take your leave. I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, have a good day. Thank you. If you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe it. Have a nice day. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.